Balance is so important in life, isn't it? To everything there is a season, wrote the writer of Ecclesiastes, a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. In Egypt, we saw how a president got the balance wrong. President Morsi listened too much to his own followers and didn't give enough ground to those of the opposition and this caused huge resentment in the country, leading to the overthrow of his government just a couple of weeks ago. In politics, we see that need for balance is constantly ne need to, needed to be kept under review. I'm, I think many of us will agree that people should not become dependent on welfare and that the, 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 the attempts to um, keep, get people off welfare dependency, dependency are healthy. But that balance has to be struck between that and le leaving people in poverty. Getting that balance right is hard. A balance has to be struck between getting the right balance between a batsman and bowlers in a cricket team. I think England have got that right. I've started um, getting interested in the Ashes, um, having not been interested in cricket for a few years, and I've been rather enjoying watching the results. And I suggest if you need cheering up, watch a bit of cricket at the moment, because it's nice to see Australia being beaten. In our lives, we need a balance. We need a balance between what we take in, food-wise, and what we give out in terms of energy, don't we? There's that um, need to balance what we input and what we output. And in our spiritual lives, this is also important. Finding the balance between activity, Christian activity and work, and prayer is so important, and yet so difficult. And this Gospel reading, of course, is the most famous one about the, the need for balance. Mary and Martha. Jesus at the home of Martha, and Martha is busy preparing this meal, and she's getting all the plates ready and all the dinner, and Mary is sitting at the foot of Jesus, looking up at him, listening to him preaching. And Martha is thinking, Mary is not helping me. Mary is being lazy. Why is Mary not helping? And she goes over and says to Jesus, have a word with my sister, please, Lord, because she's not doing her bit. And Jesus says to Martha, 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 you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Now, some people use this passage as an excuse to say, right, I'm, I'm a Mary and I'm not going to do anything in the church or do anything, I'm just going to sit at the feet of Jesus and come and, and listen to him preaching, uh, listen to the vicar preaching. I'm not saying I'm Jesus, by the way, far from it, but um, I'm just going to be a, a receptor. I don't think that's what this passage is saying. I think what it's saying is that at this particular occasion, the Holy Spirit was working in such a way that that Jesus was saying something significant, and Martha missed it, but Mary got it. This one thing, Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. And I think perhaps this passage is saying to all of us, are we listening to God and getting that balance right? Or are we a bit like Martha, and are we living life on the surface? Martha was focusing on what had to be done at that particular moment. Mary was listening to the Holy Spirit, and she knew that she had to listen to what Jesus was saying. He wasn't just saying something trifling. There was something serious that was being said, and Mary chose rightly. And every day of our lives, we have a choice with how we spend our time. Every moment, every, every hour, we get faced with a choice. Shall I go off and do this, or shall I go off and do that, or shall I go off and do the, the other? 
But I wonder how often we ask ourselves the question, should I just rest in God's presence today? Perhaps even for 10 minutes. If I find prayer difficult, just, just be still for 10 minutes and try and listen to God speaking to me. This sermon gave me immense pleasure to prepare because it reminded me of the importance of spirituality and resting and listening in a, in a, a culture of great rush. I, uh, I went to visit my mother on Thursday and I was on the train going back to Suffolk and I looked at all the commuters around me and they all looked totally devastated with stress. Um, I don't know whether it was that particular hot ca carriage, but I looked around and I thought, gosh, these people look so worn out. It was about 9.30 at night. And I, I reflected as I was preparing this, the sermon, finishing the, tu the finishing touches on the train, of course, um, I was reflecting, this is what our society is doing to so many people. Early start, late coming back, working all the time, sometimes not having any day off at all, constantly getting messages through their iPhones and email, and I know I'm to blame for that as well, but, but always being consumed by busyness, always being consumed by activity. And this culture of busyness and activity infects us as individuals, and we feel we have to always be busy, we have to always be doing things. It is the Protestant work ethic clashing with materialistic culture of self-aggrandizement and self-improvement, creating this, this panic and rush in our culture. And so this passage in the Gospels is a reminder to us to listen to the Holy Spirit and to listen and ask ourselves that simple question, when do I need to stop? When do I need to sit? When do I need to be still? In my prayers, not so much to bring God a list of requests, however important those requests may be, but just spend some moments in God's presence waiting on him. Maybe listening to some praise music, maybe some cathedral music, sometimes even secular music, um, can speak to us on a much deeper level than religious music at times. If you listen to a prom, just sit there in your chair and let a whole hour of classical music wave, wave over you, if that's the right verb. Flow over you is the word I'm looking for. And see what it does to you spiritually. You don't have to always go to the Bible to be spiritually resourced. But find those moments where we can be renewed and replenished. Because if we don't, we become spiritually impoverished. We become spiritually barren. We are living on the edge of our nerves. Mother Teresa always started her working day with the Eucharist. I think it was at 7 o'clock every morning. And yet she lived an incredibly busy life. Stopping does not make you less useful in terms of work. It makes us more useful. It makes us more revitalized. It makes us with a higher amount of energy. Martin Luther wrote, I have so much to do today, I will need to spend three hours in prayer. Because by spending time with God, he was able to gather strength for all his work. One of the books that I've read recently is The Return of the Prodigal by Henri Nouwen. And it talks about the two sons, the son that goes off to the far land and comes back and is forgiven by the father, and the other son, the older brother, who is full of resentment because he had been working hard in the fields and no party was given for him. And quite understandably, he's furious when his son, who's be, when his brother, who's been out doing terrible things with his father's inheritance, comes back and is rewarded with a party. You can well understand. You can well understand this older brother being upset and angry. Henri Nouwen writes in that wonderful book that it was the older brother that he identified with the most. 
because as a Roman Catholic priest, he had been working long hours, he'd been striving to get various conferences, deadlines met, he'd written various books, and yet his soul was becoming denuded by ceaseless activity, and he wasn't finding time to rest in God's presence. He became resentful. The story of Mary and Martha is a reminder to us when to work and when not to. And nearly all the great mystics and writers down the centuries have been people who also led a busy life, whether that even meant just doing gardening in the monastery. Prodigious writers like Richard Roll in the 14th century, full of the fire of God. We think of the Methodist movement, started by John Wesley, who experienced spiritual renewal at Aldersgate Church. And that renewal and prayer life led him into ceaseless activity. It wasn't that the activity was wrong, it's that there was, it, is, it is wrong when there is no prayer. Catherine Booth from the Salvation Army is another example. And there are so many who led very busy lives, but who were replenished by prayer, and by listening. Now, there are times when the Holy Spirit is clearly saying to the church, we need more helpers in a certain area. And I have written something in prayer pointers today about that, our work parties. And I would like you, please, to consider helping this coming Saturday um, I don't normally appeal from sermons, but I think on this occasion with the need for new people, we would love to see new faces. And all the information is there in prayer pointers and in the notices. So there are times when God does call us into activity. But maybe our activity would be all the greater if we can also find time to be a Martha, to be a Mary, excuse me to be still and sit at the foot of Jesus. Let us ask ourselves the question today, am I a Martha, always living life busy, on the surface of life, punishing myself with stress and high expectations, or can I learn to be a Mary? Can I learn to sit and be still and to rest and to enjoy the experience of being alive without achieving, without doing? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.